Right, so I'm going to give an overview of how SSL and TLS work and we'll see how they manage to, to create a tunnel between Bob and, and Alice. Okay, so let's, let's start and we'll keep things nice and simple. So here is Bob and here is Alice. Okay, so unfortunately in the middle we have Eve. So what we want to do is to stop Eve pretending to be Bob to Alice. We want Eve not to eavesdrop uh, on the communications and we want to make sure that Eve cannot change any of the communication between Bob and, and Alice. Okay, so the three things that we need is to prove identity. We need to make sure that we have integrity, that things haven't been changed, and we need to make sure that things that are sent from Bob to Alice are kept secret. So the way we do that is with a secret key to keep the privacy. So with secret key, what we're going to do is generate an encryption key using symmetric encryption, which will be generated probably by Bob, Bob the client, and gives it to Alice and says that's the key that I want to use. So we can do that through handshaking, some handshaking method, but we want to end up with an encryption uh, key which will only be used for that session and then for the next session we create a new one uh, and so on. And then hopefully it's impossible for Eve within that time limit to be able to discover the, the key. We then want some sort of integrity in there. So with that, we typically use some sort of hashing method such as MD5 or SHA1 or SHA256 and, and so on. And basically that's there to make sure that if we send data, we can add a signature to it to make sure that uh, it hasn't been changed. And then what we want to do is to prove the identity of Alice the server to Bob and to make sure that they can continue to communicate. Okay, so those are the three things, symmetric encryption, hashing, and some sort of uh, identity uh, checking. Okay, so initially uh, what we do is that we contact our service on a given port. It doesn't have to be this port, but typically for web, for HTTPS, uh, we're just using plain old HTTP, but then we shoehorn in a layer above the transport layer that will encrypt everything above them. So the other side can log or the intermediate uh, nodes can log the destination IP address, the source IP address, the source and destination TCP port, but everything above that, the contents of the data packets, should be kept secure and secret. So Bob contacts on, on uh, 443 and sends what's called the hello client. And the hello client tells the server the cipher suite that uh, Bob wants to use or can support. So Bob is a, is a, a limited processing device such as an IoT device, then Bob might only support one of two encryption methods and might not have the power to, to support an advanced encryption method. If it's something like a desktop, it might support lots of different ways. Or perhaps Bob doesn't trust certain types of ciphers that have been hacked or something like that. So Bob sends a hello client and in there he will actually define all the cipher suites that, that he wants. Okay, so the first thing he, he will do is he said, right, I want T TLS. Okay, we use TLS now and hopefully we will use TLS 1.1 or 1.2 because TLS 1.0 was hacked. So we, we tell the other side that we want TLS 1.1 or 1.2 and so on. That's contained in the SSL TLS packet 
uh, format for this this uh, additional uh, layer. And then what we do is that we define the encryption that we want. Okay, so let's say we're going to go for AES CBC. Okay, so this is going to define that for our symmetric encryption key, we're going to use, say, 128-bit AES. So this side here will create a 128-bit encryption key if it's selected and then pass it back in some way to, to Alice. Then we'll define the key exchange method. So uh, the RSA method means that Alice will send her public key. We'll bobble create the uh, symmetric key, a random one, hopefully, and then encrypt it with the public key of Alice the server and send it back. And only Alice will have the private key to be able to find out what the symmetric key is. And then at the end, we'll say we're going to be using SHA-1. So that's defined there. OK, so Bob sends this hello, which will contain all the cipher suites that he wants to to use and that he supports. Unfortunately, this has caused problems in the past because Bob can, can do what's called a downgraded attack. So if Bob sends a limited amount of cipher suites for the server to choose from, then it might be that they would, the cipher suites are weak, such as MD5 or RC4. Uh, or some way to actually define uh, weak encryption. So the hello client gets sent over and then the server returns back a hello server. And with inside the hello server, the server sends its digital certificate. So the main thing with that is that it's been signed by a trusted uh, source and it also contains the public key of the Alice the server. So we can use this public key to be able to uh, enhance the security. So it sends back that it wants to, and we can see in this example here, if you look at it, TLS, TLS with RSA. So we're going to be using the RSA there for the key exchange. And then we have with 3DES, so we're going to use 3DES encryption with CBC. And it's going to use SHA, SHA-1 for our, our, uh, our hashing. That's 160-bit uh, uh, hashing method. Better than MD5, but <laughs> starting to creak uh, a little bit. OK, so it sends it back. And then we now have a cipher contract between the client and the server that they've agreed to use this uh, cipher suite there. So then the client sends back its key. So because we're using the RSA here, it will take the key that has just been created for the session, for the tunnel, and then use the public key of Alice to encrypt that. So then it sends that back. Alice will take her private key and then decrypt this key so that they end up with the same key. We can also use elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. We can use Diffie-Hellman, but really that's not a good way to create the key. So with Diffie-Hellman, Bob and Alice create random numbers. <coughs> they take a, a generator G, they raise their G to the power of each of their numbers, they send it across, take a mod of P, and then they raise that value back to their own random number, and they'll end up with the same key. Unfortunately, Diffie-Hellman can be weak, especially in the values and the groups that we actually use. So an improved method is what's called elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, 
With that, we use the principles of uh, Diffie-Hellman, but we use elliptic curve methods to improve the security. So we can also have a handshaking method that goes on that we can exchange values here and then end up with the same key. But in this case, we're using uh, RSA uh, to, to perform our uh, encryption. So the worry here is that when quantum computers come along, then they might be able to crack, or they're likely to be able to crack RSA, which means that a quantum computer could listen to the traffic here and to be able to crack uh, this key here because it can reverse engineer the private key from the, the public key. Okay, so this is where we are now, here. Now we've set up the session. Now Bob and Alice have the same symmetric key on either side. And now they're just going to exchange data, uh, you, and which is encrypted with the symmetric key. So the methods that we use are typically AES, 128-bit or 256-bit. But we often convert our block cipher into a stream cipher. Okay, so we do that with one of the modes. Google say that it's just not enough <laughs> to have one core encryption method. So they propose a method, or they use a method called ChaCha. ChaCha20 is a method of creating a stream uh, cipher. It's faster, it can be more robust, and uh, it is good for real-time communications and for IoT-type devices who might struggle with uh, AES. RC4 has also been used in the past. That's a stream cipher. We create an pseudo-infinitely long key, and then we just XOR the bit stream uh, with our cipher, our cipher key stream. And 3DES is another one that's actually used, but not really recommended, uh, as we've generally migrated towards AES type uh, encryption. Okay, so that's the, the basic mechanisms that, that we've used there to create the trustworthiness. Eve in the middle can't determine the contents of the accesses, can't determine the URLs that are being accessed. All that Eve can determine is the source and destination IP address and the TCP ports that are actually being used. Okay, so here is the example here. And we can see here that there's the client hello and there are the cipher suites. We're using TLS 1.0 here. And there are 28 proposed as part of uh, what the, the, the client can support. And then the client, uh, the server hello that comes back uh, will then actually lock down and we can see there's a certificate also passed uh, here. Okay, and, uh, and that's the detail of that. So often when we communicate, we need to check uh, the, the connection. So let's go and check for Google. So we use OpenSSL here. So what we're going to do is just connect to Google and have a look to see what has been negotiated. Okay, so at the top part here, we're actually seeing the certificate and the trust chain. There's a certificate there in base 64. And a bit more details there. We can see that uh, we're going to be using a TLS 1 version 1 there, and the R cipher is 128-bit AES with SHA. The public key that's been passed is 2048 bits, and the details are there. So there is the key being passed, and that's the encrypted uh, key of the session key that we're actually going to be using, that hopefully Google will be able to uh, decrypt uh, from, from there. Okay, so we can use OpenSSL to be able to, to determine that. So let's have a bit more of a look at what the packets actually look like. Okay, so we can see the initial SYN, SYNAC and ACK there to port 443 in the server. The server is at 66 here and we are here. 
Then we see the client hello happening. So let's look at the detail of that. OK, so we're using version uh, 1.0, not recommended. The first two bytes there of this SSL uh, layer, integration of a layer, uh, gives us the version number. And then after that, we have the detail of the client hello. So we just run down there and we get to the cipher suites there. And here we are here. OK, so we need it in terms of the handshaking method for the key exchange, the cipher method used for the symmetric key here, and in the hashing method. OK, so each are identified with a unique code, C00A, identifies this method here, elliptic curve uh, and uh, digital uh, signature, 256 AES CBC, cipher blockchaining, and then SHA there. Okay, so those are sent over, and then it's up to this, the, uh, it's, we're sending some more details about some of the elliptic curve things that we're going to be using, which elliptic curves that we like. Uh, so you really got to watch some of the elliptic curves that you use because some people think they have been hacked. Uh, so that goes over and then what comes back is the server hello. So we can see here there's the server hello. It comes back from there. It's number two there. And then what we should see is the cipher suite that the server is selecting. Then we see the certificate coming through. So I think we should be able to see a little bit of the detail of the certificate. There we go. Yeah, it comes through as, as a, in this format here, and we can actually see it there. It looks like it's PayPal that we're, that we're communicating with here. And uh, what we see coming back back is then the client key exchange uh, here, which will then allow us to be able to get the key. Okay, so we're seeing here uh, the, the key uh, coming back from the client to actually show us uh, that return value of the, of the ciphered key. OK, so hopefully that's explained uh, how, it, how it works. And how we get this uh, integration of SSL to make things secure. OK, thank you.